Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Monday, September 11th, 2017 edition of VR News. Start with our first story. Covered Marvel superheroes yesterday, so only fitting we cover some DC ones. Tying in with the upcoming Justice League movie it's coming out this holiday season will be a VR application for all the major virtual reality platforms. Justice League VR is going to feature five mini games, each of which allows you to control one specific member of the DC flagship superhero team, with one exception, Superman. You'll be able to drive the Batmobile as Batman, fight off enemies as Wonder Woman, explore the oceans as Aquaman, stop a bomb plot as The Flash, and finally destroy robots as Cyborg, of course, member of the Teen Titans. Full version launching this December. As a bilingual person, I think learning languages is great. And my personal bucket list has a few on there. I'd love to be able to speak Mandarin, Hindi, Japanese. Probably the, the top three for me that I'd love to learn. Also love to see innovating things in virtual reality. However, going to take a bit of a different turn with this one. I think VR can really lend itself to improving a lot of applications. With language, however, I think it's going to fall a little short. And here's why. Now, it's true, people, we all learn differently. But one of the most powerful proven ways of learning language is through immersion. So what's the point of sitting on a virtual train speaking to essentially an animated puppet? It's only marginally better than learning from a book or a video. My recommendation, if you're serious about learning another language, it's okay to dip your feet in an application like this, you know, with a given language. But if you are serious, watch videos and find native speakers to interact with. There's lots of services for Skyping with them, uh, Discord, etc. Now, that doesn't mean that the app is complete crap. Far from it. There's 30 languages on here. And for the most part, the voice recognition that it also offers is pretty decent. However, the person in the article who tested the application said one of the languages they were familiar with, Japanese, which on the surface, given you know the amount of syllables, should be fairly straightforward for language recognition, proved pretty damn bothersome. And after about 30 minutes, the writer quit. But free is free. And if you have a Gear VR, you can get this absolutely for free. Like I said, 30 languages on board. I don't think it's the best way to go about learning a language, but as a tool in the arsenal of learning the language, why not? If you wait and have a Google Daydream, you can get it for $4.99 US. Next story, the UK's Royal Academy of Arts exhibit is going to feature virtual reality works. It's going to feature works in VR, namely Google's Tilt Brush and Six Senses Make VR Pro. It's going to be titled From Life. The exhibit is going to focus on art history from the Renaissance period to today and what creating art has meant to artists living from the Renaissance to now. And as part of looking at the future of art, From Life is going to feature the work of a Jonathan Yo, who in partnership with Google Arts and Culture is going to build the first free standing structure created in Tilt Brush. We've seen artists experiment with different ways of taking Tilt Brush projects and showcasing them to the world. It's something we've talked about on this channel, how to best go about that. And I'll cover that again at the end. Also featured in the exhibit is the work of the VR production studio Factory 42. They're working on a commission from Sky Arts and Google Arts and Culture. From Life, the full exhibit going to run December 11th of this year through to March 11th in 2018. Tickets are available via the Royal Academy of the Arts website, £13.50. Those outside the UK can still check out the exhibit. Many of the works are going to be featured via Viveport, the Sky VR app, and the Google Arts and Culture app. And I've included all of those in the description below. All of this brings up a really good point. And that is, and we've talked about this part, like I said earlier on the channel before, is how best to view this art. Well, the obvious one is through a VR HMD, but it's cumbersome 
and not always practical to look at the art that way. Right now, that's pretty much the choice you get or a 360 degree via your static 2D monitor. But I think it brings up an even bigger problem. And that is how do we keep the damn art in the first place? Looking back to the 80s and 90s, for example, and I'm talking pre-internet, so much beautiful digital art and even not so beautiful, but still art, uh, you know, subjectively to me, not beautiful, lost, lost because of a couple of factors, technology changing, going from floppy disks to optical to hard drive, and then the operating system changes and just over time, not keeping the backups current. Sometimes they're not being a backup at all. A lot of that stuff, just based on how the internet works, yeah, it's retrievable from about 95 beyond, but anything, like I said, pre-internet gets a little trickier, which is a shame, because like I said, there was some amazing stuff I remember seeing, and thankfully some of that saved, like the demo scene has done a pretty decent job saving things. The games themselves, again, subjective, whether you view that as art or not, but because of emulation projects, we've managed to save a lot of that uh, game base, for example, for the Commodore 64, trying to document every piece of software ever created for it. But what about the art? So it'll be interesting. The art now that we're viewing through VR HMDs, are we still going to be able to do so in 20, 30 years? Is it even still going to be around, I guess, are the bigger questions. In 1998, it was November, Half-Life took the first-person shooter world absolutely by storm. Now, you could argue, and you'd have a point to a point, that games like Unreal were important as well. And I'd agree. But Unreal, Quake, to me, looking back, were more tech demo in terms of Flash, how they looked. Half-Life did something unique. It turned the FPS into a vehicle for story. Really good story. I can still picture the Black Mesa complex in my imagination because I remember playing that and man, did I spend tens of hours playing that game and then I'd go back and play it at different difficulties and then I'd handicap myself with things once I got too good at even that. It was just a really special game and it laid the foundation for more story-driven FPS games to come. Plus the fact that uh, the main character shared my first name. Nice little bonus to throw in there. Well, virtual reality may have access to that first Half-Life game. Some code spotted by Reddit user Formic and Pikachu when he was searching the term VR on GitHub. He discovered some code from a developer, Max Vollmer, who had released early VR integration for the first Half-Life game. Now, just a note of warning, and it's stated in the article as well, this could result in getting you VAC banned on Steam. Not sure of that either way, just know that going into this. So if you're going to try it, make sure you take precautions. We'll just leave it at that. Not sure, again, even how likely that would be. But again, if it's a concern, take the proper precautions. Now, it may be that this mod goes nowhere. And as you can see from the footage, there's a lot of things that still need to be fixed. The scale is off quite a bit. Uh, probably some of the physics in terms of how that interacts with the scale. Hopefully, though, the author doesn't abandon the project. He gets assistance and they're able to finish this off. I think that would be fantastic to be able to explore the Black Mesa complex in VR. This type of project brings up an interesting possibility. One we've spoken about before, I think it was about a week and a half, two weeks ago, I talked about viewer Chris Brower's idea of plus wanting anytime you see a please turn this game into VR or add VR functionality to a game. It doesn't have to be a 90s game like Half-Life. There's so many good games out there that I think would make fantastic VR candidates. I'm thinking of, a, you know, Far Cry, for example, in the 2000s. Was it 2004? Somewhere in there, 2005. 
would probably make a fantastic VR game as well, and there are literally dozens more. Not to say there's not indie artists right now cranking out games for us, there is. And the bigger AAA published type games, they're starting to get released too, but there's always room for more. One of the things that's going to build VR is content, and the more, the better. I don't personally care where it comes from. Doom BFG, I hold that up all the time as an example of how good an old game with added VR functionality can be. That provided me with dozens of hours of VR fun, better than so many native virtual reality games. And that is a formula that can easily be repeated. Well, guys, that's it for the news on this Monday. Hope you guys have a, a decent start to the week. As always, cheers, guys.